It's almost amazing to me at this point how much these Rotten Tomatoes certified critics are completely out of touch with what the general public wants from a movie. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. Where are they? They're dead. All right, can I go now? It's that time once again where we look at some of the most ridiculous and very obviously biased reviews on the garbage tier website that is Rotten Tomatoes. You sit on a throne of lies. I want to make something very clear before I begin. I understand and for the most part agree with the criticisms that this movie has a very basic story. I also believe that that basic or non-existent story is pretty consistent with what we get in the games. So in a lot of ways this story feels very faithful to the source material. Could they have given us a story with a bit more of a deeper emotional core? Sure. But if they did, would this movie still feel like Mario? If my answers frighten you, then you should cease asking scary questions. I think a lot of critics, and I use that term loosely as always, oftentimes let their own insecurities impact the way that they watch and absorb a movie. You see, having a relatively simple hero's journey tale just isn't appealing to these people. Because they'd rather a kid's movie shoo in a message about the importance of understanding female menstrual cycles. You know, the type of shit that really doesn't belong in kids' movies. What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? As a parent, I'm much more likely to take my kid to see a fun animated movie with no story than I am a movie that's trying to lecture them or me. Further proof of this double standard comes in the form of how these critics and detractors react to MCU movies or Star Wars movies. Anytime someone like me rightfully criticizes one of those movies, people almost always try to dismiss those criticisms by saying, well, these movies are made for kids, even though they most certainly are not. And the difference is, is that there is a wealth of source material and lore that offers the opportunity for great stories to be told in those universes. Yet Disney consistently puts in minimal effort, creating lackluster stories, completely devoid of logic, and yet still people make excuses for them. Meanwhile, Illumination makes an actual kids movie that is faithful to the source material and is filled with fan service. And all of a sudden, story is the most important thing to these critics. That makes sense. The truth is, is that if Mario was made by Disney, it would be certified fresh. If people didn't hate Chris Pratt for unknown reasons, this movie would be certified fresh. If this movie contained a story about the princess being oppressed and being held back from becoming a queen by the patriarchy, this movie would be certified fresh. Instead, this movie gave people exactly what they were looking for in a Mario movie, and it has a 29% on Rotten Tomatoes. Let that sink in. Why are you the way that you are? These bad reviews have more to do with grown-ass adults bringing their internal bullshit into the theater with them than it does anything they actually saw on screen. I personally judge this movie as a kid's movie because that's what it is. I have no interest in being some geek who obsesses and hates on an animated movie because it doesn't validate my beliefs. That being said, let's look at some of these reviews so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. The first review comes from Nick Johnston, who says, quote, an 80 minute speed run through the Mario world with little in the way of fun that actually makes the video games themselves special. Cram full of generic fan service that will be lost on at least half the viewers. So while this movie may not have been fun to Neckbeard Nick, it looked like a lot of fun to the kids who are at my screening. So I'd say their opinion matters a little bit more in this situation. Imagine that, grown-ass men complaining about a kid's movie not being fun to them. Crying emoji. And by the way, a lot of what made the game special is recreated for the movie, so I have no idea what he was watching. As far as being crammed full of generic fan service, you know, like pretty much every single movie that comes out today, like every single superhero movie this guy probably drools over, doesn't do the exact same thing all the time. No Way Home, anyone? If you remove the cheap nostalgia bait from that movie, what you are left with is nothing but a average at best movie. But keep telling me that fan service is a bad thing. I'll take fan service over cheap nostalgia bait any time of the day and twice on Sunday. And yes, there is a difference. Man, I'm tired of being right. And by the way, if there's a slim chance that you're one of the people who doesn't know who Mario is or what he's about, I highly doubt that you're going to be confused by this movie. As we've already covered, it's just not that deep. Next, we have Jeff Nelson, who says, quote, kids will have a blast, especially with its nods to the popular games. However, its childish sense of humor 
and lacking narrative fall short. A what? I'd love to see this guy's review for a James Gunn or Taka Waititi movie. You know, those movies filled with childish humor that doesn't really work and actually detracts from the story they're trying to tell? Because in most instances, I still see people praising those directors for unknown reasons. But no, let's call out the childish humor in a f kids movie. Do these people think before they write these reviews? And last but certainly not least, we have the clueless one herself, Grace Randolph, who says, quote, totally inaccessible for non-fans of the Super Mario game from Nintendo. Fans might even have a hard time with the non-existent, antiquated, and somewhat offensive story. Shocking misfire for Illumination, the only bad movie they've ever made. Now, not only is Grace Randolph clearly admitting she knows nothing about the games, and that is obviously part of the reason why she didn't like it, and that would be fine, but she's also calling the story offensive. S-O-F capital T, soft T, huh? And if you're wondering what could be so offensive in a Mario movie, the answer is just as ridiculous as you would think. Apparently the big issue is that Peach is portrayed as a prize in the film, which doesn't line up with people's modern ideology of what a female character should be. So even though I believe that Illumination made a very conscious effort to avoid this ridiculous controversy by making Luigi be the one who gets captured instead of Peach, people are still upset because both Mario and Bowser presumably want Peach. Oh, the humanity, the humanity. Proof that you can't make everyone happy no matter what you do. These people would rather you completely rewrite history and avoid the main storyline of the game, avoid the main objective of the game, just to protect their very sensitive feelings. If it was me, I would have had Peach be the prisoner in this movie and told everyone to deal with it. And then just made her a bigger character in the second movie like she was a bigger character in the second game. At that point, I think people like Grace Randolph might have had a mental meltdown. Yeah! Bottom line, to me, most of these reviews are displaying a very clear bias and a clear lack of understanding of who this movie was made for and what the source material is all about. If you're going to criticize the Super Mario Brothers movie of all movies for being too simplistic and too basic, then you're going to need to keep that same energy the next time Disney or WB wants to take one of their beloved characters or a great story and turn them into a joke because that's where your frustration and your criticisms should be pointing. They should most certainly not be pointing at a children's animated film. Congratulations, you played yourself. Y'all be cool. Right on.